So those of you that were happy or worried about the Galaxy Note becoming a foldable completely, that's not necessarily the case. As it looks like we'll be getting a Galaxy Note 20 lineup that doesn't fold, even if there is a possibility of variance. We might be getting closer than we thought to the iPhone 9 event after all, even if no one can track the day right now. And with those 5G upgrades on the OnePlus 8 series, apparently it'll still remain an affordable lineup. I'm Jaime Rivera and thanks everybody one more time for staying home. Uh, bear in mind, I don't like to report the news on April Fools because some of it can be both so just bear with me. I'll report the most important things and hopefully these are news and not something else. This is Pocket Now Daily. Now, one thing that we do know is not bogus at all is what we've ramped up when it comes to deals. To kick the month off, we've got some deals on Apple products and tablets from both Amazon and B&H. Starting with B&H, the latest MacBook Air is $50 off. The iPad mini is also $50 off, leaving it at $499 for the 256 gigabyte variant. And they even have deals on the iPod Touch, which is $40 off, even if I don't know why you'd buy that. Moving on to Amazon, you can also get $350 off iPad Pros depending on the model you want. The Galaxy Tab S4 is also $153 off, leaving it at $597. So yeah, for those of you that watched our After the Buzz of the iPad Pro with the current deals for the 2018 models, that's what I was talking about. You can learn more about everything in the description. Now moving on to Galaxy S20 news. I know that some people like the 120 Hertz, others don't like that it's limited only to 1080p when the Oppo Find X2 can actually do Quad HD. But regardless, those of you that don't like the hit that you get in the battery life, which wasn't that much my case with the Ultra, apparently there's an alternative to not just go all the way down to 60 Hertz. The Galaxy S20 actually supports 96 Hertz in refresh rate that Samsung hasn't enabled through software. XDA has created an application that gives you a toggle feed between 120 hertz and 96 so you can actually just follow the link in the description follow the instructions get 96 hertz that's an alternative for some people i think it's going to be fine but uh test it out let us know what you think now one of the rather unfortunate problems with the huawei p40 series is regardless of how beautiful they are and how great the photos are uh, well there's no google play services and uh, well i did a whole video on the p30 pro well actually i would be the mate 30 pro regarding how you can live with that huawei app gallery now it seems that there is an interesting change apparently huawei is uh, trying to get these google services on the app gallery just like apple has on their own app store the company has already found the temporary solution by linking web services like google drive google maps and translate to the app gallery they still don't have the actual apks but it is a good solution for the time being Obviously, we hope that the ban gets lifted because if you wanted to install applications, and I've tried it, I mean, you can install YouTube, for example, the app, even if you get the APK, will work, but then if you don't have the Google Play Services framework, it still won't work. So, I don't know, it just crashes. Hopefully, there is a fix to all this mess soon. Now let's talk about OnePlus. Ever since 2014 that the company launched their first device and went crazy with the price tag, well, they've been going up on price, but not substantially. Uh, they remain affordable even if they are significantly more expensive than they were before. Think about it as we're expecting OnePlus to bring significant updates to the OnePlus 8 lineup like 5G, LPDDR5 RAM, and hopefully wireless charging support. And we're obviously skeptical that these upgrades like 5G will make the price spike and maybe cross the $1,000 mark like Samsung is using as an excuse. However, Pete Lau just talked to Business Insider and confirmed that not even the most specced out model will reach $1,000. We'll keep you posted as soon as the rumors emerge. Hopefully that doesn't mean code for $9.99, because come on, Pete, hopefully that's not the case, we'll see. Let's uh, talk a little about Apple. I mean, we've been talking so much about the iPhone 9. I think we actually started covering the rumors for about a year now. And uh, well, it's not SE2, it's apparently the iPhone 9. But then obviously with everything that's happening with COVID-19, we did not know if we were gonna get a product at all. Now we have a new report that claims that uh, in an internal meeting, Apple has locked April 15th as the launch date. And apparently the phone will start shipping on April 22nd. The report does mention that things might change due to the pandemic but that is if all goes well. We should still get that event on the 15th if everything goes as planned. Apple is also doing interesting moves. I mean, right now I need support for my iPhone 11 Pro, which has a dead display. 
I can't get it fixed and apparently what Apple is doing is actually shipping iMacs to their retail employees to provide support, which is a good thing to do right now as a lot of people are at home and we can't really do much. So yeah, stay tuned as hopefully customer service with Apple gets fixed. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with the Galaxy Note lineup, which remains probably one of my favorite Android lineups of all time. I've been using it since generation two, over and over, year over year, and I'm actually not going back. Obviously, we've been covering the possibility of a Galaxy Fold 2, and uh, the recent leaks showed a Galaxy Fold 2 with an S Pen, so we were like, wait, is this the future of the Note? Which would make all the sense in the world, but you know that sadly foldables are not necessarily the best products right now. Now, apparently we are still getting the conventional Galaxy Note. We've got a tweet from Ronald Quant that shows the mold for an inlay for the Galaxy Note 11 Plus or Note 20 Ultra or whatever it's gonna be called. He claims that the markings and the aspect ratio could be a little off, but it does resemble what we got with the S20 lineup, especially with the camera hump. It also resembles what we got with the Galaxy Note 10 Lite at CES. The Note 20 Plus has popped up on Geekbench already, sporting a Snapdragon 865, 8 gigs of RAM and Android 10 out of the box. I know, 8 gigs of RAM, I probably that one's not gonna fly, but let us know in the comments down below. If you had to pick foldable Galaxy Note 20 or a standard flat slab, what would you pick? Because in my case, I'm hoping that they launch two conventionals, the regular Note 20, the Note 20 Plus, and then they launch an ultra variant that is the foldable, and then everybody gets a choice. That's me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know what you think, though I totally go for the foldable. Friends, again, thank you for staying at home, and if you want to get the news earlier before this video is filmed, follow us on BargainNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow me on my personal handles to see me stay at home with you guys as well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.